Fight. Why is it hard to put out the fire of chip subsidies? Why can China break through an adversity? Hey, friends. I am a veteran of more than 20 years in the wave of science and technology. From the chip racing when smartphones rose to the computing power armaments after the outbreak of the AL model, I have witnessed too many changes in the science and technology circle over the years. Do you still remember the broken core pane of the United States to ZTE in 2018? That crisis was like a boulder thrown into a lake of technology, and the ripples are still spreading today. Today, I want to talk to you, but at present, the hottest and fiercest war in the field of science and technology in the world the chip subsidy war. The US Chip and Science Act hit 52.7 billion US dollars bait, the European Union followed the introduction of the 43 billion euro chip act, and Japan and South Korea even wrote semiconductor subsidies into their national strategy. How deep the water behind this may be far beyond your imagination. When governments of various countries end up spending a lot of money, it seems to be industrial support, but in fact it is surging. Every subsidy is like a fall on the strategic chessboard, affecting the nerves of the global industrial chain. Do you know? Under the seemingly calm technology market, there is actually an undercurrent. After an emergency closed-door meeting in 2024, the South Korea Semiconductor Industry Association, KSIA, announced that it would add US $23.2 billion in chip support funds in the next five years a huge investment equivalent to one-third of the country's annual defense budget, which not only covers advanced process research and development, breakthroughs in packaging technology have also set up a chip talent revitalization fund, with the intention of regaining the dominance of memory chips through the layout of the entire industry chain. At the same time, the U.S. Department of Commerce in the 2025 Advanced Semiconductor Security Framework Amendment plans to China lithography parts export restrictions from extreme ultraviolet EUV, equipment, expanded to deep ultraviolet DUV, key components, this move stuck neck tactics directed at the core supply chain of China's chip manufacturing. China has shown strategic determination in this game, implementing a new round of tariff exemptions through the regulations on the development of the integrated circuit industry and software industry, giving zero tariff treatment to imported semiconductor equipment parts, and establishing a scale of more than 200 billion yuan. The third phase of the National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund focuses on supporting advanced processes below 7 nanometers and third-generation semiconductor materials and other stuck-neck areas. When South Korea capital investment, U.S. technology blockade and China's policy combination collide fiercely on the semiconductor circuit, the global semiconductor geopolitical game has already broken through the scope of commercial competition and evolved into a science and technology world war related to national strategic security. Every policy change and every capital flow are reshaping the power map of the global chip industry. Asterisk. This chip subsidy war has long gone beyond the simple game of financial investment and evolved into a century-old dispute concerning national strategic security and global industrial discourse power. From the Cold War period when the United States supported the rise of the semiconductor industry through the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, to 2022 when the U.S. Chip and Science Act dropped $52.7 billion to build a chip wall, to the European Union, Japan, and South Korea successively introduced 100 billion subsidy policies, the flow of each sum of funds coincides with the fierce competition between big powers for computing power hegemony and digital sovereignty. When TSMC went to the United States to build a factory, the layout of chip foundry was reconstructed, and when ASML lithography machine export control cut off the technical chain, the butterfly effect of this war has quietly penetrated into every corner of life, the iteration speed of smartphones has been forced to slow down due to chip shortage. The production line of new energy vehicles has stalled due to MCU chip shortage, and even the cost of smart home appliances has risen due to chip. Price increases. Next, we will dismantle the deep logic of the global chip subsidy war and explore how China can open up its own breakthrough in technology blockade and capital encirclement and suppression. Asterisk. 1. The hegemonic calculation behind subsidies in the United States. The United States has invested heavily in chip subsidies. Earlier, the U.S. passed a huge chip subsidy bill and invested large amounts of funds to attract chip companies back home. Giants like Intel have all planned to expand or build new chip factories in the U.S. The U.S. does this not just for the development of the chip industry, but there are deeper political and economic considerations behind it.
From a political point of view, the United States has always wanted to maintain its hegemony in the global science and technology field. As the core of modern science and technology, controlling the chip industry is equivalent to holding the lifeline of global science and technology development. Through subsidies, the United States tries to firmly grasp the key links of the chip industry chain in its own hands to prevent other countries from rising in the chip field and posing a threat to its hegemonic position. From an economic perspective, the chip industry is a huge ecosystem that drives the development of countless upstream and downstream industries. The United States hopes to create a large number of jobs through subsidies, stimulate domestic economic growth, and increase taxes. The subsidy policy of the United States also faces many problems. On the one hand, huge subsidies have imposed a heavy burden on the U.S. finances. These funds could have been invested in other more urgently needed areas, such as education and medical care. On the other hand, whether the subsidy can really achieve the desired effect is still unknown. The development of the chip industry requires long-term technology accumulation and stable industrial chain support. Financial subsidies alone cannot solve all problems. Moreover, the subsidy policy of the United States is obviously exclusive, which has aroused the dissatisfaction of the international community and aggravated the global trade friction. This unscrupulous approach of the United States for its own interests seems to have an advantage in the short term, but in the long run, it may destroy the ecological balance of the global chip industry and ultimately affect its own development. 2. Europe, the difficult road to catch up. Europe had a glorious history in the chip industry. In the 1980s, Infineon, ST Microelectronics and other companies once occupied an important share of the global chip market, and Dutch lithography giant ASML became a key link in the global semiconductor industry chain. However, with the rise of the United States by virtue of Silicon Valley's technological innovation advantages and Asian countries relying on large-scale manufacturing, Europe is gradually falling behind in the chip manufacturing process iteration and market share competition. According to statistics, in 2022, the output value of European chips will only account for 8% of the world's total, far lower than 46% in the United States and 42% in Asia. In order to reverse the decline, the European Union launched the European Chip Act with a total scale of up to €43 billion Euros in 2022, aiming to leverage private investment through government funds, and plans to increase the proportion of European chip production capacity to 20% of the world by 2030. Germany, as the engine of European industry, allocated €5 billion Euros to support Infineon's construction of a 12-inch fab in Dresden. France, in cooperation with ST Microelectronics, invested €7 billion Euros to build a whole industrial chain ecology covering design, manufacturing, and packaging. In addition, Belgium, the Netherlands and other countries have attracted international giants such as TSMC and GF to lay out advanced packaging and material industries through tax incentives and R&D subsidies, trying to reshape Europe's competitiveness in the semiconductor field. Asterisk the advantage of Europe lies in its profound scientific and technological background and high-quality scientific research talents. In chip design and some high-end chip manufacturing technology, Europe still has a certain degree of competitiveness. Through subsidies, Europe hopes to attract more capital and talents into the chip industry, speed up technological research and development and innovation, and narrow the gap with the United States and Asia. Europe is also facing many difficulties in the development of the chip industry. There are political and economic differences among European countries, and it is difficult to coordinate and unify the chip industry policy. Moreover, European chip companies are facing fierce competition from American and Asian companies in the global market, and their market share is limited. In addition, the development of the chip industry requires a lot of infrastructure construction and long-term investment, which is relatively weak for some economic strength. For European countries, it is not easy. Although Europe is trying to revive its chip industry through subsidies, it still needs to overcome many challenges and find a development path that suits itself in order to rise again in fierce global competition. 3. South Korea, a desperate gamble to add subsidies. South Korea has been at the forefront of the chip industry and companies such as Samsung and SK Hynix hold important shares in the global chip market. However, facing competition pressure from countries like the United States and China, South Korea also felt unprecedented crisis. Therefore, South Korea decided to add 23.2 billion US dollars of chip support funds to try to consolidate its advantage position in the chip industry.